Thank you, Ben. Did you catch that little musical organ note as we were coming up here? Fa la 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 la. Believe me, if I wasn't a Christian, I would think it the most inappropriate thing in the world. Why, why do I say that? I say that because I don't know what it's been like for you the past three months, but it's been pretty good and bad. Lots of up and downs, sort of like an emotional roller coaster, and both including personal deaths and things like that, as well as the tumult of the election and what has happened in Aleppo, and I could just go on and on and on. But if I did, what would happen is that you would physically sit in your pew and do like this because that's what it's been like. And I actually didn't know how much it had gotten to me on the inside until I'd heard via a fellow clergy person that someone I knew and cared about had died. And so I called just a few days ago, and I thought, I was calling the widower, and I thought, oh, what a terrible thing to face on Christmas. So I called him up, and I said, Merry Christmas, and I'm so sorry about what happened to your wife. And he said, well, um, thank you very much, but we just got back from a trip, and all she has is a bad cold. <laughs> I said, what? He said, well, well what did you hear? I, I heard that she had passed away. And he said, oh, no. <laughs> Turned out it was somebody else. But, but what I noticed as I was talking to him in my Bluetooth on the car coming back from another errand to be done today was that it was like my entire body just exhaled. <sighs> One less thing to try to bear up under in the midst of a season that really should be marked with fa la 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 It doesn't makes sense, does it? Except for that. The manger scene, the crash. I noticed, I actually put this on Twitter. I came up and I took a picture. It's arranged a little bit differently this year. And I posted on Twitter, you actually have to be able to bend down low to be able to see the baby Jesus. And I said, that's actually how it is most of the time. Because he is not always in view, at least not like this. What's in this view are headlines, the latest thing on the news, the song that's going in your earbuds, if you're people who listen to music on your earbuds, the next thing that, ha that you have to do, that your phone is telling you you have to do, on your calendar, the next reminder and the next phone call. The baby in the manger is not a part of most of our consciousness, even if we call ourselves Christians. Right? Nod your head. And so tonight, especially tonight, with all that we have known, I do need to come into that place where angels fold their wings as the choir sang, Oh bliss, oh love. Not to be reminded of some mythic story that helps me get through the night that feels like the worst of nights but instead to be reminded of what is, in fact, truly real. It especially for me comes across in the Christmas carols. I, I, I need the carols. I really do. Because our hope, and this was written by someone I know, is that light does come into darkness, that this child born in an animal stall is still more important than all the kings and rulers, that the lowly are close to God. I need to be reminded that what happens in a manger is more important than what happens to billionaires, politicians, movie stars. I need to be reminded that when war and politics seem to destroy quote, all is calm, all is bright, that God comes and brings them back, and that love's pure light wins over all of hatred and terrorism that reigns in this that is God's world. I need to be reminded of, in fact, the realest thing 
that God has placed inside of me is his child, which is his nature, not mine. (laughs) My mind is far more prone to believe in what I see and to believe in what I hear and that the religious emotions that I feel when I get into situations like this can be terribly fleeting. So that within 48 hours after getting out of here, 48 hours, heck, 30 minutes, especially if somebody cuts me off on my way back home, all of my feelings of fa la 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 is just, oh, I just got to go home and get to bed. You see, there's a reason we gather because our own perceptions are in fact too much with us. And that there's a promise that Jesus makes that when we gather together in his name, something begins to happen in the atmosphere around us as well as within us that is in fact bigger than our own hearts. That the babe lying in the manger becomes the body of Christ gathered. That the Holy Spirit is present here in our midst. And not only are we adoring a baby, but as it says in the Romans lesson tonight, our great God and Savior Jesus Christ is moving among us, touching our hearts, reorienting our vision, shifting things inside of us to remind us if we are Christians who we really are, sons and daughters of God who have every right to both kneel before the Savior and to stand tall in the face of the oppression of the world. To walk with a dignity that is nothing less than supernaturally divine. To have the courage as a result of that dignity that God gives us, that even in the worst of injustices, in the worst of the darkness, we still walk with a level of care, a level of compassion that isn't naive, no. It's in fact a foretaste of the world that God has already placed within us a sign to this dark world that the most real part of the world is what is presented and symbolized here. That what happens when we receive the bread and wine is the divinity pours into our soul and that we know that we are literally foretasting the very kingdom of heaven that is breaking into our midst. You won't see that on CNN. No, instead what will happen? is that if there's any sort of skirmish going on between Palestinians and Jews in this holy night, in this holy land, that will be the highlight as we see fleeting pictures of those who gather holding candles in their hand at the places where they pay him homage still. Or even in the cathedral in Mosul, now open again for Christian worship after having been closed for so long. Stuff, rough, hearty, people holding a candle in the night, believing with all of their heart that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Can you see that? Can you see that? You see, if all you know of religion is sentiment, it helps but it doesn't give you courage. It doesn't give you poise. It only gives you a kind of nostalgia, a longing for better Christmases that you have known before. Trying to come into this building and work up a certain kind of feeling so that you can be better about the holiday, especially when you get together tomorrow and the presents don't quite measure up or one of the relatives drinks too much or maybe even the turkey burns for crying out loud. And the holiday, according to some, is ruined? No. What makes this real is what we see here. And if you have said yes to Jesus Christ, what God has put in here. That's why I prayed what I did at at the beginning about God forming in our hearts a manger for his son. Because we are invited not merely to observe the miracle, we're actually invited to partake of it, to say yes to it, 
to kneel before it and to know that to get down to be able to see the Jesus in the manger up here in the crash is in fact an invitation to a different way of life. It's not just bending over a little, hoping you don't hurt your back. It's in fact hoping that somehow as you kneel, you are saying yes to the one that this crest symbolizes, the one who made heaven and earth, who in fact did promise that it will not be forever that the blood, is, the blood garments are lying on the battleground, but at one day they will be rolled up and set for burning because a child will come and bring a new kingdom of which we will, as his people, exhale completely with great joy. And that the fa-la-la-la-las that we sing now, actually we do so prophetically because that's where we're headed to that place where there is no pain, grief, war, but instead that place where God wipes away every tear from every eye. Let me put it another way. If you're a fan of the uh, television series called Stranger Things, you will know the phrase, the real upside down. In some ways, that's what this is. Only it's not a place of terror, but it's a place of hope, a different reality. Some have called it the great reversal, where for the sake of our weary hearts and our weary world, mercy triumphs over judgment, and that what we see in a baby is that humility and generosity and love are in fact divine attributes. Can you see that? Can you say yes to that? It's, it's not easy, both because of what we see out there, but also because of what we see here. None of us are perfect. Many of us have done terrible things to harm people in the name of Jesus Christ, sometimes unintentionally, more often than not, but it still happens. And all it does is that it makes Christ even more hidden than he would have been had we not so erred. So it takes a certain level of courage even to come. To in essence take a risk that these crazy words in the scripture are in fact true. And that even though it rails against all that you have ever seen, believed, or known, isn't there something in your heart that causes you to hope perhaps this might be a time when my heart can be refreshed when I can know a new peace that I have not known before, where I can be welcomed into a God who this preacher bishop up here says actually loves and cares for me? I know it's crazy. Believe me. But I believe it's the truth. In an article in the New York Times today, Ross Dothet, a Christian, wrote these words. He said, the wager that Christmas offers us year end and year out is a bet. It's a bet on God's love for us. A wager that all the varieties of religious experiences that everybody tells you they have, wonderful and terrifying, inscrutable, can and should in fact be interpreted in the light of one specific history-altering experience. A divine incarnation, a baby beneath a pulsing star. The odds on that wager feel different year to year. They change with joy, suffering, tranquility and crisis, sickness and health. But I haven't found a better bet. I would say the same. I haven't found a better bet. And more than a bet. I have found the kind of sustaining fuel that gives me the grace to live even in the midst of my own inner inconsistencies as well as the inconsistencies in our world. Where else can you go to know that you can place yourself in the hands of a God who loves you and that you can walk with that kind of dignity because God loved you enough 
to send his son. So please do not be idle tourists wandering in to this memorial and saying, how nice it was to be here, and then go home. But then instead, take the line and move it. Step across it between tourist and one who prays, one who asks, one who says yes to this one who in the midst of all of these forms invites you to know him. That in the midst of the crazy days that are ahead of us all, we might still be able to sing even fa-la-la-la-la, la-la-la-la. Amen.